Hey guys, this is Kirop speaking, and today we are back in automation with the Ellisbury update and Tiny Motors Inc. producing the world's most muscu muscular uh, key cars. And uh, they are, of course, not running out of breath uh, very, very soon because we are just making massive amounts of cash. And that is hopefully not going to change with the very important date that is coming up. And it is, of course, the uh, advent of the 660cc. In the last episode, we updated our lineup to adapt to the 90s and a new regulation allowing us uh, to produce the way larger engine. 20 percent. Is it 20 percent? A little less. 660 divided by 550. No, it is exactly 20 percent. I was, I was gut feel right. So uh, yes, 20 percent uh, increased capacity for the win. The Electron is the first one to go with it, and unfortunately, we did not quite manage to cram in the VVT. That is going to be something that we are looking forward to implementing uh, rather soon. One thing that we could take a look at is to make uh, an engine for the future, or several engines for the future, because if we look at the engine lineup that we have at the moment, you see that our engines are from the... Uh, it's even worse. <laughs> okay, our B4 is from 1950. Yes. Uh, is that one still produced? Like what? Is it actually somewhere in, in there? Nah, nah, we're not, not making this anymore. We're making these two. Yes. So 1967. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's 22 years. I think in the mid-90s we're going to make something uh, pretty amazing. And, and for that we do need plenty of research as well. How does research look at the moment? R&D, where are you at? We do have... Ooh, oh, oh, nice. Ah, we scaled this one back. Hmm, because it was too expensive? I don't know. We can up this again. 50 million. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, we can make the ultimate engines then. But other than that, I don't think we need much more. We've made good use of the driver assists, slowly implementing them, traction control and uh, such into our vehicles. More interior even, more safety. Oh, we are... Oh, yeah, we are currently losing a little bit of um, technology level there because Gasmir is going down the drain. I think we can add a little bit of... Uh, research here into drivetrain maybe a plus five it makes our lab costs amazingly high though ouch well uh, gonna take this drivetrain is always nice to have um i think we're going to aim for now that we have 282 oh no no we don't have it yet sorry we don't have it yet it's not 1990 yet but we will have 292 no 282 horsepower as our upper limit and depending on how lightweight our car bodies are, uh, that could mean that all-wheel drive actually is something that we can seriously consider. Marketing probably can be beefed up as well. Are we even selling into Hedvesia at the moment? Because our cars aren't that safe anymore and the regulation has changed because I, I rebalanced it. It's my fault, sorry. Uh, Hedvesia, okay, wh what are you doing? Is this... Uh, no, that's not the market step. Let's go to Hedvesia here and see our current sales data. So far, so good. Uh, what is their current level? Huh? Really? No, this is Gasmir. Like that. 35! Oof! Ooh! Do we... Do we have 35 with any of our cars? Uh oh, we can easily take a look at that uh, by just expanding this. Safety, oh yeah, easy. Every single car that is reasonable can be sold there. Uh, even for the, yeah, okay. We're, we're fine, we're fine. We're not so fine with these. Okay, the Electron won't be able to sell in, uh, in Hedvesi. Ah, that's acceptable. They don't like these kinds of cars anyway. Now we should see a big bump in, oh, wait a sec. Big bump in research. Look at how tiny the slice is. Yeah, that's not good. 
uh, marketing. We want to take a look at marketing. That was what we were doing. Whoa, 82%? <laughs> You're kidding me. Uh, it's pretty good. Everyone knows who we are in heavy delivery. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, everyone knows the Gazmi and key cars as when, when it comes to heavy delivery. That's um, it's not an association I planned on uh, creating for this run. I think what we could do is up reliability marketing a bit more, copy to all, and also up these two by one and copy to all. That will be expensive. But let's see what happens. Oh, we are at... Uh, come on, take over. And, oh yes, that is a pretty big jump. Company valuation, sitting at a, a snug 13 billion. And now we'll just let time pass and see what the 660 is. Oh, wait, wait, is that... Are they still selling this? Uh... No, stop, 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 stop. How many have we sold? We have sold a total of 218. Yeah, that's more than enough to be considered for a gentleman's agreement. Um, well, mini brute track car. Do we want to upgrade this? Nah, nah it's, it's costing us way too much reputation. So you know what we're going to do? Car project, no, that's the wrong button. Back to up. Uh, we want to go into the factory manager and take tiny weird cars factory. Oh, paused. Okay, that's why it's great. That's very good. And we are going to select project configure and then... Oh, no. We need to, to erase everything. It's like this. Okay, tiny. Perfect. Sign it off. No loan, thanks. Ah, oh, total cost of 34k. Yes, sign off the factory. It's gone. Boop. There. Tiny Weird Cars has finished construction in Gazmia. Yep. No more little shitty cars that are just trying to move the gentleman's agreement. Oh, that's good. We do have a little bit of a surplus here on the old cars. Higher refresh costs. Oh no, 15 million. Ah, oh, yeah. come on. I have a refresh cost. Seven million. Yes, I, I take it. And there we go. And uh, stop you right there. Nope, stop. Ah, this is. It's not listening to me. There. Now, fine. The electron is done. And now the sales are on. I think we are overproducing a little. Well, that's a good problem to have. I mean. That's uh, definitely nice to our factories in general. And we're just making tons and tons of money, regardless. We still have... Wow. How is that? Possible sales last month. We're still selling a bunch of them. We have 5,000 cars in stock. Can we just get rid of them? Let's uh, go into the uh, forecast and pricing and reprice them a little. Because that is uh, a little shit. So, um, oh, they are very expensive. That's that's why they were inefficiently produced. And here we go for a little price drop, sixty percent, not six percent. Thank you very much. Uh, calculate the forecast and then just accept. Even if the numbers are going to jump back, yes. Let's see if this is going up now. Uh, Two hundred three and three hundred sixteen. That's way better. It is nice to see that we also have a little bit of a stockpile of the other cars. That just means that we're not going to have to pay back <laughs> loads of money to our uh, pre-orders. Chassis material glued aluminium. That's stuff for proper supercars and lightweight sports cars. Ugh. There we have factory stuff again. Se seven? What? Okay, that's quite expensive. 70 million? 70 million there again? Well, it's two of the same factory, basically. Just cloned. Oh, oh these two. Whoops. 44. And 220! <laughs> uh, those costs are higher than I thought they would be. That was... How much was this? Like, a billion? 
an extra cost for factories? That's... I've never seen anything like it. We have been running these factories harder than they were set out uh, to, to be run. Oof. Yeah, and they're big negative numbers too. And now... Come on. Sales. Yes. Big profits. 300 million. Oh, by the way, we've already implemented selling of factories in the new dev version. That is going to be a feature with the next big update. The slices here are looking reasonable. Marketing and research about -ish, uh, 10 to 15% each. Oh, wait a sec. 1990. That is also opening up Ahana and the Lua. I almost forgot about that. Holy shit. So, uh, research and development, no. I wanted to go into marketing because we can prepare these markets for the next facelifts. Need to facelift in 19, uh, after 1990 for those to be unlocked. But uh, I think this would be worth it. Let's see. Oh, the lure. Um, they don't know about us because there's zero marketing and there is nothing here either. And they're both open. 30 minimum, 15 minimum, minimum safety. And we don't care about emissions. That's fine. Otherwise, these markets would be nice. But uh, having Wes 11, and it makes that uh, a non-issue. So should we just hit the button to copy over everything? Copy to all. Boop. Oh, look at this tiny slice they have. And now, boop, slightly larger. Yeah, we're going to establish ourselves there. And Hana... 5% at the moment, but growing at 5% a year, that is looking good. I'm not particularly keen to just facelift and spend another 200 million a factory just to get into Ahana. That needs to come uh, naturally as we are getting a little closer uh, to our facelift. Maybe we can do it a little earlier than we wanted, but not really. It's not, not necessary. There's still some cars in stock from the City Mark 1. And there they are gone. Beautiful. A nice and clean setup. Only selling modern shit. So, uh, when do we make the, the next and last car? I think probably late 90s. That would make sense. Last new model for the game for each one of these categories. And until then, we probably want to do one more facelift. And I'm aiming for... What do we have here? Oh, this is nice. Light AHS steel. Uh, I think 95-ish would be reasonable. That's before our factories are uh, going full tilt and produce only shit anymore. That... Ooh. Demand is really big for the booby. Maybe we should just add a factory to the booby and an engine factory to go along with it just to expand our production capabilities. Uh, they, they are... What, what shifts are this? Are these factories running? The booby construction factories. Uh, let's see. That one is making the nugget, 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 booby. Yeah. Utility C. Huh. It's even, even called a reasonable name. Ah, uh, that's huge. Okay. Well, we can slap on another huge if we wanted to. But this one is just running at 1.5 factory shifts. Ooh, that's because they still don't have the staff, I believe. Yeah, new staff per month, 3%. Okay, well, that explains why they can't keep up quite enough there. Um, but we might want to still consider just cloning this factory. <laughs> And have another huge one, another huge utility C. The utility C too. Uh, if we want to do this, then we should get started right away and not take a loan because Taxman is going to be very, uh, very happy otherwise. Don't want that. Don't want that ever to happen. So, um, let's uh, take a. Does this have anything special? I need to check out the cars again. View the current one. Uh, like this one. Just check out what the uh, chassis configuration is so that I don't build something that we don't, don't need. Uh, this would be... Chassis. Oz galvanized steel partial monocoque. Okay. Yep. 
Oh, good thing I checked. Also, I do need the galvanization plant. This is probably a good move uh, to expand this segment specifically because of the unlock of Ahana. And in the 90s, Ahana is becoming a pretty large market for these kinds of cars. Especially if we can produce them at a uh, reasonable price. So, we are going to make a new car factory and engine factory. A um, design a new factory, yes. Oh no, wait a sec. Do we want to have it tooled already? Let's see how long that takes. I think this is uh, probably a little too long. So we might want to just build it first. We do have the booby here, this one. Could tool it for that and then uh, huge in Gesmir, yes. We do want, we do like to have stuff. Uh, ah, there you see, we do need steel presses and galvanization plant. And this is going to take 54 months. 54 months is a long time. Hmm. But it's a nice way to sink some cash. Yeah, I like it. I do like it. Can we wait 54 months until the uh, next uh, facelift? I think the answer is yes. Because these cars don't grow old that soon. So I think the plan would be we let this run basically five years um, and then oh, 54 months is uh, what four, four and a half years. Uh, four and a half years that gets us to ooh, what would the 97? Start of 97. And then we're going to do a final facelift. 120 and 80. Pay them well. Hope they don't screw up. 75 tooling quality. All really expensive. But do I care? The answer is... 4 billion. A little. A little is the answer. And not really. So we're going to sign off this factory. Remember 54 months and start of 97. And now we do need to build the engine factory to go along with it to sink another 4 billion, considering we have 16. That's a minor uh, inconvenience. So, new engine factory. I think we build a mega factory, right? We build an absolute beast of a factory. In Gazmir, huge plot, and... Did I call the other one anything? Should have. Huge it is! And we are going for... Oh, what do we need? Aluminium foundry. Oh, did I not choose? to uh, tool it to something. No, I didn't. Okay, well, I need to change that. A oh, great! Throw it away. Out of the window you go. It's a big window. Uh, yeah, this is called Car Factory 7. Now, copy pasta. There you go. Put the two there. Perfect. New engine factory. Select this. And now, uh, key sport. No, thanks. We are going to tailor it to the inline free Mark V. Huge on huge. Don't change the name because I want to copy pasta it. Ein Foundry. Have we not switched? Ah, oh, no, because of the fucking power density. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, our engines make way too much power for this. So, um, even the, the cheapo uh, end user family version of it. Uh, what more do we want? QA testing. Probably. Why not? Maintenance? Yeah. Put that on. Huge. And, uh, oh. And ma yes, maintenance. Yes. And then expanded offices. Uh, higher production for f and material cost reduction. Yes. And staff facilities. What do we want more? QA testing? Or staff facilities? They kind of affect the same thing, so... Let's go for the staff facilities. It's slightly less expensive. And now, what what is our output? Whoa, <laughs> one point uh, no, basically two million production units. Is that per month or is this per annum? Um, anyway, we're just building this. You what? Is it the Mark IV? Are we building the Mark IV in there? Yeah, this must be right. Okay. Oh wow, the match is so perfect that we don't see the line. You see? There, there it disappeared. There it's gone, and there it's underneath. Okay, so it's absolutely spot on match. 
42 <laughs> 42,000 engines per month. Yeah, that's nice. Looking good. That is another no loan. Oh, just 2 billion. That's a bargain. Yeah, let's sign this off. Oh, I didn't check how long it takes, but uh, probably not that long. Uh, 54 months? <laughs> by, by chance? Let's see. Yes, it does. So this is finished in March 1997. I think before then we could make a new version of the Electron and potentially uh, try to cater to a... Uh, uh, can we can we make a supercar? No, we can't. We do need a new model for this. This is where the Mini Brute factory comes in. And oh yeah, we, we do know that it does take a little longer to make the VVT version of the uh, Electron engine. Did we? No, we did not take that because this was a really short re-engineering project. And before then, uh, let's see, was that the engine taking that long? It was not. No. Good. So uh, we still have to apply VVT to this engine and make it palatable. When are we going to do this? Is the question. Uh, v VVL? Oh, that could be added as well. But let's wait till 95. Uh, retooling is always so expensive and we are so short on cash. Oh man. These factories don't cost enough. Look at this. This is the uptick from building two huge factories. Taxman, taxman. 790 million will be paid in taxes over the coming 12 months. Yes, I'm, I know. I'm not expanding quick enough. But this is not the point of the series. I'm not trying to max this score. If I wanted to, I would have played on a more difficult setting. Oh, uh, it's it's fine. We're doing well, and now or soon rather, uh, we'll take a look at making a new electron. Oh, we should check our West standards. Oh, you what? Our Sport GT3 is not passing West 11. That is horrendous. Oh yeah, by the way, we should have <laughs> taken a look here. We're gaining in tax credits 11.7 million per month. That's also not too bad. And now that things have settled, let's have another look at the markets and see what our competition is doing. Sales breakdown and where we are at in terms of... Not Ahana, not the Lua, not Freenia, not Hedvesia. In terms of Gasmian muscle. Uh, muscle comes... <laughs> Uh, where's M? There, M. Okay, now we're, we're not doing all too well, but, um, 5% yeah, market share. <laughs> Still better than nothing. Uh, but now, let's take a look at the city karma. How are we doing in Fruinia muscle cars wise? They probably like us quite a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, comparatively, yes. But no, in terms of city cars, where are we at? There's the city car. Oh, the third. Oh, and so close. We're so close. I think we can probably become number one until the end of the game here. With our last model. And where are we in terms of light delivery? That is one of our best ones, I believe. Oh, in Frenia, we're second. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> company average awareness. No one knows the industry company. It's like, oh, who? <laughs> but everyone knows about us. 77.5%. And they still have 19.5% uh, market share. What are they building? Okay, they do have a model that is... You what? Okay, that's their light delivery version. It's It's very popular. Very, very popular. Let's take a look at the stats. So, pretty shit in terms of comfort and sportiness. Like, really bad. Uh, let's compare to to ours at a, in a moment. 7.7 .7 liters per 100k. That's also awful. Does have a lot of cargo volume, though. Three cu cubic meters. Where? Where do you... Where in this car that you see in the thumbnail is that? Well, I guess they cheat with large car bodies. Uh, tiny motors. 
So let's uh, uh, th these are the stats, right? So um, yeah, twenty-five, uh, yeah, twenty-five, yeah. Okay, eighty-nine reliability. We have Das Booby. Look at it. Okay, well, I, I have just found another potential reason for why Ferenians don't quite like it as much. It is fucking ugly. It is more sporty. It doesn't have as much reliability. Am I seeing that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. It is better on the fuel economy and stuff. It, it does have some advantages. Um, but, yeah, the other one isn't too bad. Focuses on what they want, right? And way higher reliability, too. That's cool. Oh, there's one more market that we want to check out. I uh, take the month there just to, to get to 1994. That's when I want to start the facelift for the Electron. But um, I do want to check how we're doing in light sports. That was a category that I think we were supposedly doing pretty well in. Uh, industry... Are we not in there? But Tiny, Tiny Motors is there. Okay. We're, we're not even close. Holy shit, we're bad. 1.6%? Oh. Is that because uh, we can't sell into, into Hedvesia and Ahana? Uh, no, it's still bad. I guess we just make shit sports cars. Electron Sport? Like, what do you have? A sports convertible? Okay, that does look like an actual sports car. Wow, look at the drivability of this thing. Uh, yeah, we can't really match that. They, we are way more sporty, though. Um, well, this is just more rounded. And especially, it's probably larger. <laughs> Larger, more comfortable. All right, I uh, just ticked a little bit extra, but um, auto manual is quite nice. I think we might want to wait for another year until 1995, maybe? Nah, just half a year. Okay, now let's get into it. We do need to make that new uh, Electron engine work properly and make something a bit... Um, more appealing because we suck at the moment as you saw market share wise we are way down there in the gutter seven percent or something so uh, that needs to be corrected and for that we need to update these beautiful cars 44 drivability that's not good that's actually pretty shit all right uh we do need a facelift new facelift it is the sport mk3 mk4 it is still doing really well, of course. Can't do much about that safety, though, can we? Uh, anyway, we are going to take a look at the engine first. Replace this one. It is the Kai Boost uh, 660. Our trusty old Boxer 4 engine. Okay, what can we do? Let's uh, just do a quick engine comparison. Mm, that would be to this one. This is the MK4 with the wrong name. Ah, that must have been the previous one. Is it this one? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's definitely this one. Uh, why wasn't was this called? Should should it be the MK6? Was the other one that I'm just comparing to is the MK5? Ah, whatever. Let's call it the MK6. Slight upgrade overall, just updating the, the formula, so to say, and uh, there's nothing we're going to change here. Could make it even more sporty. Whoa. Oh, yes. Quite a bit more. Uh, more responsive. So, let's do... Ooh, does that make that large difference here? Oh, yes. Right, so, let's go lightweight. Like, make it real punchy. And VVT all cam. Whoa! <laughs> that is that is an upgrade. <laughs> That's an upgrade worth waiting for. And let's see if we can go VVL at the same time. Because why not? Uh, I can tell you why not. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, you don't want to try and engineer both at the same time within the same tab because that makes this one vector extremely long and just overpowers everything else. So, no. Uh, that's not something we're going to do, but I'm going to see if that would change anything. 
So if we go for this there and low end this, okay, no. You see, it <laughs> kind of spools later because the more aggressive cam profile also makes it such that the pulses that are arriving are quite forceful. Not like small farts, but rather big smacks in the face. Well, let's go back to uh, 80 cam. Probably lower this one to plus two quality only now that we do have VVT on there. The capacity was already set correctly, of course, even though this looks, this curve comparison, looks like we've just upped the capacity, <laughs> but that's not the case. I'm happy, happy, really, really happy with the turbo setup here. Just straight through the middle. Not too high, not too low. Uh, it's looking good. And we are making 163 horsepower now. That's respectable. It's not fast, but as long as the car doesn't weigh anything, we don't care. Fuel system. Whoa, we can get direct injection at six tech pool. Oof. Yeah. How much would that be? Same power. Yeah, okay. But uh, way better on the map, of course. With the same uh, fuel. Yes, yes, yes. It's uh, way better at handling this, but not uh, really advantageous in terms of power. So, uh, we're going to stick with our multipoint. We do have some more flow, so I'm upgrading uh, our header size. And do I need to do that on the exhaust as well? Nah, not really. Oh, but look at this. This is almost entirely due to the VV, uh, VVT change, not VVL change, VVT change, we just got another 30% better fuel economy out of this engine. That's insane. That's because most of the fuel economy driving is done before the turbo spools. That has pretty close to the optimal loudness. If we went for uh, reverse flow, nothing would change. Would it be better in any other way, though? Nah, not really. It's fine. Let, let's keep it. It's good. What a beautiful machine. It's a little outdated by now, but it's still beautiful. Need to uh, start building the ultimate, uh, the ultimate in terms of engine block and head. And that needs to come very soon, because it's going to take a long time. We're probably going to go through two prototyping sessions and then have the real one put into a car in a third uh, installment and uh, 165 flat I think that's a decent amount of power out of this engine let's uh, do an auto pull and you tell me if it sounds okay good uh, it certainly sounds like a slightly more powerful engine so where are we at in terms of car design then? we're already at a hill count if that's good news still doing rear wheel drive is that something that we would like to change with this engine being there let's check here uh, maybe all-wheel drive hill count yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big change, but I think that is due to more like stability control and stuff. We don't necessarily need this as an all-wheel driver. As you see, we do have plenty of power here in first. There is wheel spin. Could accelerate faster, which uh, this one clearly shows. So there you go. Oof, that's almost a G in acceleration. While here we are struggling to, to reach uh, 0.70. So that's, a, that's an upgrade. But also it's it would be somewhat costly. Although, no! We have five tech pool now, so we could go for it. Maybe this is perfect for an on-demand system. There's certainly no problems with wheel spin anymore. That's pretty solid. It does have issues when it comes to... Uh, the the tests for lower grip and front and rear but if we change back and forth you see the improvements here and that's uh, worse fuel economy 
I mean, it's a sports car. Six liters, six and a half liters per 100k is uh, extremely good for a sports car, even though it's light. Um, and the rest of the stats are looking quite a bit better, apart from sportiness, which is a bummer. This would give us the opportunity to get some extra familiarity with it, though. Oh, I, I think I'm going with it. Oh, one drawback, of course, is that it's heavier. Um, let's see how much it does. Uh, it's just 20 kilos. 20, no, it's more than like 25. That's a significant amount when the car is just 675 kilos. Okay, you know what? We're going to do like this. We're going to try it out with electronic stability control. See if that fixes the same problem in a different way. And then uh, probably keep it like this. Because we have heavily invested into the um, drive aids. So that should be possible now. And the uh, unlock ahead of time should have disappeared since then as well. Ooh, we need bigger brakes though. Or more pad. Probably both. Yeah, 300 in the front. Don't really need the top speed, so potentially could just go for the sports on the tray. And it is time to switch to the CD. How much do we... Oh, no unlock costs there. We do have 30% familiarity already. Let's dial this back to just plus nine. And what? You don't like it? What is this? Oh, it might change you don't like. There we have... Yeah, okay. That's the previous one. That's this one. That is a pretty chunky change. And 500 bucks for the upgrade? Yeah, I take it. But now, electronic stability control. Here we go. Not at plus nine, but um, this one is 2.6 years of unlock. So let's go plus. Uh, this is still a lot of engineering. Let's drop it down to plus three, maybe. At zero, it would just be 24 months. I'm not sure if we have to pay the entire thing. I think we might have to, because we had absolutely nothing on there before. But let's check out the drivability stuff. The, uh, yeah, okay, it doesn't fix it quite. If we went with all-wheel drive as well... Oh my god, he has the stats. <laughs> um, I think we do both. <laughs> Why not? Because we did invest into drivetrain as well, in terms of research, so we had plus five. And this doesn't seem too extreme. Can go a little heavier in the rear, rear bias. And the on-demand is nah. Let's let's compare the stats. Uh, this one. Oh. Okay. Less sportiness, more drivability. And same for prestige and safety, of course. But what about the weight, same about-ish, same cost. Hmm. So what do we prefer? I think I'm going with the helical. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, interesting. Can uh, at a slight more front split. I do get higher stats in general. It's looking nice. How fast does this thing go? 295. Probably 300 if I push it to the top there. Oh, almost. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. <laughs> One kilometer an hour off. Zero to 100 in five seconds. Now we can get larger front tires too. Are we making this thing a little too beefy? No, <laughs> we've added a lot. All right, it's 706 kilograms. Advanced 90s should be without a penalty now. So we could switch over. And that would... Does that make how much of a difference does that make? It does make the difference that we can sell it in Hedvesia. I mean that's a significant difference because we do need 35 for this. So a plus three quality 90s advanced would get us there. New suspension damper type. Yes, I take it. And oh, we're going to put the pick every best component there is and now it's it's a, it's a fat little bastard oh still some unlock i think this comes from the active sport doesn't it 
No, from a semi-active Dampus. Okay. So if we go uh, active sport here. Do we get uh, the them benefits? Oh, yes. Oh, well, this is... This is kind of supercar-like now. If we do this for all of them, it's really crazy. But it is eclipsing anything we've built before. So this one is the updated one, and these are the old ones. Uh, how well does it do around the test track? With its uh, measly 160-something horsepower. What was it? Uh, there you have it. 165. Let's check it out. It's probably quite fast. Oh, it sounds... The shifting is so goddamn slow. Let's just make a, a quick um, statement of fact by selecting a different gearbox. Um, finish time. Two minutes and 16 seconds. That's fast. But if we go here and select a sequential. Uh, sequential? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the sports, 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 sports uh, gearbox. So uh, it's a little quicker. Let's see how much is being lost there. What a difference. And no difference there. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, what? Uh, wh why is there so, so little difference? I mean, now I'm slightly stumped. Why didn't that matter? Ah, oh, well, anyway, we are going to stay with our trusty manuals. Just lowering top speed a bit is really helping this one. Don't quite know uh, why that is so extreme, but I think it's because the, uh, the gear ratios are a little stretched for just five. Going all the way up to 300, you don't have that many gears when you only have five gears. So it's fine. Um, also adjusted this. This is the second one I'm looking at. Probably square up the wheels here too. And fix the rest in suspension setup. Drivability is still absolutely atrocious, or again, because it is terminally oversteering twice. Sports under tray will fix this partially. Oh no! It's just barely scratching. <laughs> I need to go plus five on the quality for the convertible to uh, get that to 35 to be able to be sold to uh, Hedvesia. Yes, there you go. Sw switch them both over. And now I do have a decent amount of drivability. Uh, worthy of a modern car. So, uh, this is looking quite solid. Plenty of stat increases. And the convertible is selling well. Or would be selling well. Let's do the final one as well. The Sport GT3 MK4. Oh, wait a sec. This one is using the other engine. Uh, replace this one. Okay, so how can we make this one better? Uh, first and simple answer is this one. Yes. Oh, shit. Variable geometry turbos. How much unlock do we have here? Uh, none. Oh, hell yeah, we're going to do this. <laughs> we are so going to set it up like... Uh, with a variable geometry turbo. That is amazing. Oh, it's going to be. First, we need to fix this, though. Um, what is braking exactly? Could you could you tell me? Uh, where's the compressor map? Yeah, here we go. So, variable geometry goes boom. Ah, surge. Okay, fine. That's good, because uh, we can make the turbo larger. And the turbine larger. And that will not strangle us too much in the end, then. Oh, also the turbo tune is like really out there. It doesn't have to be. We're not boosting it this massively. So four-way graph it is. Let's see, turbine smaller, strangles it on top, as to be expected. So we want something like this. And if we open it up a bit more, it just shifts everything. So I want to go with a pretty compact tune here, like a very low end-ish. It's not that much flow that we have, um, but a 60-50 is pretty solid. And then we could apply more boost if we wanted to, but we're getting really into the red, which means that it's inefficient at the compression, uh, and that 
for turbo basically means that you uh, do produce just more heat. More heat for the same amount of pressure. And uh, then, where, where are we at now? 220? But this might be a little expensive. Can shrink it down slightly. Manifold size is looking almost correct. Let's drop it a little more. And header size looks like it's a bit wrong now. Let's drop this one significantly. There you go. And let's have another look at the uh, uh, timing map. Because that is looking like we are leaving a lot of power on the table. But having 220 horsepower already, that might not be the worst idea. Because we do get decent efficiency because of that. But if we run at 7.5, we are at 227 horsepower. And we can probably get to 230 if we reduce it further. Yeah, this is kind of maxed out now. It's almost 230. Um, if we go here, 229. There, there you have your 230. Um, is this a good engine? I think it's way better than the old one. But that's mostly due to <laughs> using VVT and let's not forget the uh, variable geometry turbo that's another aspect of it um, maybe we do want to drop this too to get us some more throttle response and the only thing this engine really is not liking is how much power we're making 230 horsepower well within the limit of the gentleman's agreement uh, <laughs> So, yes, uh, what we do need to upgrade seems to be the engine block. Maybe we do need to make a race engine that is uh, fully CC'd. CNC'd, I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's move forward and upgrade the car. See what comes out of it. This will be kind of like a supercar. Yeah, it would be. This now should also reach uh, a decent top speed. Of 300 kilometers now. Uh, go for all-wheel drive. Four seconds. That's quick. And that's four seconds with um, <laughs> with the slow box. Three seconds if we go sequential. Holy. We do have some brake fade issues here. That's a lot more sportiness in this one. So let's go for 60 pad. And maybe another point in quality. Just drop that down. The rear, we also just need more size. Okay, that was easy. Maybe even slightly higher pad. Get rid of more of that. Oh, 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 oh my god. They don't like it for drivability. I'm not going to compromise too much on this. Yeah, it seems to be fine though. And uh, now, sports under tray. Going to slow the car down again. And CD it is. Holy shit! <laughs> Look at that drivability! <laughs> Where does that come from? Wow! Uh, so, electronic stability control being the, the hero here. Of course, we do have to uh, put it down on, on the ground. Feet on the ground. And this one needs to be slightly better too. Where are we at with safety? We are engineering for plus five anyway. Active sport suspension, bam, yes. Not going to use the new dampers just yet. And right height is uh, quite adequate. Lo huge load capacity thanks to the new suspension as well. Did I not upgrade the wheels? Oh, I did not. Okay, that explains why it's so understeery. Yep, okay, let's change things back. Okay, pop this one over. Let's see where... Ah, beautiful. Thanks to uh, mild amounts of downforce that the under train now is producing, we're getting a reasonable uh, look for the steering behavior in fast corners as well. Beautiful upgrade overall. Let's see what the engineers are telling me though. Oh, and also we need to test track this thing because it is rapid. Or at least that's what I believe it is at 230 horsepower. And that's usable horsepower, mind you, on the track at least. I mean, 
life starts at 5,000 RPM, but um, here we go. So, uh, that is that. Let's hear the sound. Ah, yeah, it's just shifting time is the issue. These cars will need uh, sequential, not, not sequential, uh, dual clutch transmissions. The bad part about that is that for the tiny engine that we have, we are producing massive amounts of torque. So if you want to build a tiny gearbox for the tiny engine, then you're going to have torque problems. But it's a 21180. Yes, nice. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Oh, that's taking a little while. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I, I guess we have the time. <laughs> I can't throw much more money at the problem, can I? Like 200 million extra just gives me a few months. I mean, I'm going to do it. That's that's uh, it's fine. Uh, also, probably less uh, reliability. I want to get down to five years. That's that's a lot of time still. Um. Can I even produce this for that long? A little less learning would help as well. And tooling doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. 60 months. Whoa, what a facelift. This is more like an all-out final build of a car that was really successful and now is going to be godlike. Hmm... Lots of tech that I'm putting into here, but the, the vectors aren't too extreme. 30 months, 30 months, 30 months. Uh, we're making good use of it. Drivetrain. Drivetrain? Why am I paying nothing for the drivetrain? Does that mean I can put some quality into it? I think the answer is yes. So this is with the all-wheel drive helical. Uh, okay. No additional engineering time there. Let's put it to plus five quality for even higher stats. Oh my god. So beautiful. Now, back to engineering. How bad is it now? Uh, we now have <laughs> 2.5 months. It's still 60. I don't even need to adjust anything. Uh, that's good. Uh, okay. I thought we wouldn't have any issues with the engine. Seeing that it's taking five years for the car to engineer. Uh, oh, I'm a little bit wrong on that. Um, and the, uh, the nice turbo on top is also costing us a little. I think I'm going to adjust down the quality of the top end slightly. Otherwise, this is going to take forever. Ah, uh, this one was still at plus four. Now let's lower it to plus one. Uh, stiffen up the springs a little to gain back that lost amount of power at the top only lost two horsepower it's fine could also go and lower this one by two steps that will make things better uh, let's have another look at the compressor map just so that we are oh yeah it's no longer looking as pretty that's for sure but it will do and now engineering oh no! <laughs> Why is this so bad? I guess because of the reliability slider, isn't it? 95, that's ridiculous. Um, let's pull that down. Oh yeah, that helps. And the tooling can go down. Uh, funding to the max because we don't need money anymore. And thus reliability can go back up. And tooling can go back. There we go, 60 on the nose, and that is perfect. Finally, engineering VVT. <laughs> oh my god. This really puts it into perspective. That pulling up of the funding slider is this. <laughs> it's a third of the pie. Uh, okay, well, um, maybe, maybe it's a little overboard, I have to admit. This is uh, a prestige project of ours, and uh, we're going to pay for it dearly. Ah, oh, yes, QA threshold, look at this. Boop. Yeah, perfect. That's still looking good. Lots of profit. Oh, we're selling them for <laughs> tons of money now. Uh, I think the in the engine cost is now our pulling up of the slider. 
that's not necessarily what we want for it, but um, let's sell the let's let's stagger things a bit. So this is just for 25k, and then the Sport GT3 is a little bit extra. Oh, people don't like it cheap. No, they don't. Yeah, this is better. Okay, I'm going with the stagger. It's going to be fine. 19.99. Yeah, and sure, we're going to party when this one comes out, finally. No loan. Whoa! Holy shit! A billion for this! That's a billion! Because of... Uh, I think I've spent 500 million just on the... Extra on the engineering. Uh, just because... Reasons. <laughs> I guess it's fine. We have the money. And we are getting too much anyway, so I'm going to take it. Sign it off. Oh, wait a sec. Is this correct? Plus zero, plus zero. Everything in order. Yes, sign it off. Agreed. That is a long project. Yep. All right. But uh, overall, I think we are in a really good spot. Um, soon, have to start making the ultimate engine. Now that we have all the base tech available. I think a kind of five to ten-ish years prototyping project would give us a very solid foundation for the ultimate key car engines all right i hope you enjoyed and if you did please leave a like it does help the videos and i shall see you guys next time